Verse 3 says, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? When he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth his, together his friends and neighbors, and set, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I send you that likewise joy uh, shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Verse 8, either that woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose the one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth, uh, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. For I have found the peace uh, which I have lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of, of God over one sinner that repenteth. I'll not read the rest of, of that until we get down to, we're very familiar with the prodigal son here. And, and how that he left his father and left his home. And, and then he was in, in a terrible strait and was hungry. And, and he was in a far country. He was away from his father. And then he comes home, and as he comes home, the, his, if you look down in, in verse 21, and he said, The son said unto his father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said, unto his, said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. <coughs> Uh, he was lost and found, and they began <clears throat> to be merry. Look down verse 32. <clears throat> and it was meet that we should make merry. He's talking to the elder son that was upset. And it is meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. I want you to notice in verse 6 there, when the man had found his one sheep, he called his neighbors and his friends together. And he said this, Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. For I have found my sheep which was lost. Look in verse 9. When she found the, the coin that was missing, that piece of silver that went uh, possibly on a necklace or a thing that they wore on their head, that was a, it would be like a diamond in a, in a lady's wedding ring is what it would be like. She searched and searched for it and says, And when she had found it, she called her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. And then we see down on in the chapter how that when the, the son came back, that the father put a ring on his finger, put a robe on, his, on, on him, and put shoes on his feet, and killed the fatted calf and made merry. Brought everybody together with him. Verse 32, there he said, It was meet that we, that we, not just him, but we, should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and alive again and, and was lost and is found. There is a reason to rejoice. It could be, would be said for us that we ought to say, Would you come and rejoice with me? Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Lord, I pray just in just a few moments, Lord, as we look at a couple things here and let the folks out, Lord. Thank you for the day. Thank you for your blessings. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Just real quickly. They rejoiced over what was found. Okay? They rejoiced over what was found. The lost souls, they, they, when they get saved, there should be rejoicing. There should be rejoicing not only in heaven and there is rejoicing in heaven over one soul being saved. But here on earth, we should be rejoicing when somebody receives Jesus Christ as Savior. When someone has went away from the Lord and, and comes back, uh, uh, we, should, we should rejoice over the fact that, that, uh, that they came back to the Lord. There should be a rejoicing, and not just one or two, not just a preacher, but... We ought to say, man, would you rejoice with us that they're back and we ought to enjoy what God has done in their lives when he, he found them again and brought them back. 
The woman greatly rejoiced when she found the lost piece of silver. The man rejoiced when he found his lost sheep. The father rejoiced and made merry when his son came home. Boy, I want you to know something. There should be some rejoicing. And I, I, wanted to, I was going to go into a, a detail on those, but I won't tonight. The fact is that, hey, listen, there should be rejoicing over souls being saved and people come back to the Lord. There should be rejoicing in our church because of the one that cared. The one that cared. We ought to rejoice over those who cared. The faithful shepherd who went out looking for that lost sheep. I'll tell you what, that's a picture of our Savior as He goes out looking for, for that lost sheep, looking for that Christian that's away from the Lord, looking for the lost that, that they might come and receive Him as, as Savior. We ought to rejoice that He's busy working in and in lives, and we ought to rejoice over our great shepherd that watches over us uh, continually and, and trying to herd us to, to, to green pastures and to, and to fresh drinking water uh, in our lives and, and taking care of us. We ought to rejoice over him who cares over us on a daily basis. The great shepherd, Jesus Christ. But we find so many times we don't rejoice over anything. We might rejoice if our ball team wins. We might rejoice if we get a raise at work. We might rejoice if we, if we get a, a this or that out of, out, of, out of life or something. But boy, we ought to be rejoicing over the one that cares over us. We should be rejoicing over that faithful shepherd, Jesus Christ. He's our faithful shepherd. We should be rejoicing over because the woman there, we find that... Uh, uh, that the woman, she lit a candle and, and she searched diligently. And if you look at that, it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. And she represents the Holy Spirit and, and, and the light of God's Word that works in our hearts and lives. And, and even tonight, we ought to rejoice over the Word of God and, and what God has given us in His Word and, and begin to have our hearts stirred because of the precious Word of God and the light of the Holy Spirit that shines in our hearts and brings a, a conviction when we sin and, and brings comfort when we're, when we're in distress and, and lifts us up when we're down and, 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 and points us toward our Heavenly Father. But we to rejoice over the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within us. He's that light. He's that comforter. He's the one that corrects and directs our lives and, and guides us. There's a wonderful Father who's waiting to receive us and, and restore us. We ought to rejoice over the forgiveness of God. I don't know about you, but boy, I thank God for the forgiveness of God. And rejoice over the fact that when it is forgiven, it is forgiven. Amen. It's gone. And I can rejoice over the forgiveness that my Heavenly Father gives me. And I can rejoice over the Holy Spirit guiding me and direct me. And the Word of God, how it, it guides and directs me. I can rejoice over my Savior who I can have fellowship with and who loved me and, and died on the cross for me. And oh boy, I tell you what, day after day, count my blessings and rejoice. I can rejoice in a place called home. I'm not talking about the earthly home. It's this boy, when he came home, he came home to his father. A picture of heaven. Well, I look at people's lives and I look at the mess that they're in and I see the, the struggles that they have and, and they're no rejoicing because they don't have a place called home in heaven. When you stop and think about what a blessing it is to know that heaven's your home. It ought to stir your heart. What a rejoice. What a rejoice, not only because of the eternal home in heaven, but we ought to rejoice because our name's written down in heaven. In Luke chapter 10 there in verse 20 says, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not with that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Well, I'll tell you what, if you can't get excited about anything, you ought to get excited about that. You ever walk down through a, a hallway in a, in a public high school or high school and see all the pictures of seniors and everything? And they'll have a, maybe a, a big frame and a bunch of pictures and names of, the, of all the seniors and their picture there. And, and people go down through there trying to pick one another out and looking for those names. My friend, I want you to know something. I'm not worried about my name being on a picture in Clearwater High School in, in Piedmont, Missouri. Hey, listen, my name is written down in heaven. Amen. Boy, I can rejoice over it. Rejoice in the provisions of God. 
He said he'd supply our every need. That's that boy when he was down in the in the in the in the hog pen, he didn't have what he needed. He was away from the father. But when he got home, the provisions were there. My friend, stay home, stay with the Lord, stay close to him, and, and you can rejoice in the provisions of God. Would you come and rejoice with me? I tell you what, I see so little rejoicing in the Lord in God's people. We get so caught up on the negative things. We get so caught up on because this one don't do that and that one don't do this and this one is out away from God and this one's over here doing this. And I, hey, my friend, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Boy, tonight there ought to be a rejoicing in our hearts, a stirring in our soul. And man, I just chopped a 45-minute message up into less than 10. <laughs> Yeah, now you say amen. <laughs> but rejoice. 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 You wake up in the morning, you ought to rejoice. You put on your clothes, you ought to rejoice. You get to go to work tomorrow, you ought to rejoice. You say, you don't know where I work, you ought to rejoice. You walk outside, you look up and see the the sun or even the clouds. Boy, we rejoiced over the clouds and the rain today. Amen. Rejoice. Why, preacher? Because God is good to you and me. He is so good to us. And he has blessed us. Every head bowed. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for the time of singing, Lord, the testimonies. And thank you for the word of God. Help us to draw near to you. Help us to lift you up. And we'll give you the honor and glory for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand. Hunter will sing to God be the glory.